For the first time in 1911 syndicate history, please don't try this at home. Actually, don't try this anywhere. Good evening, and tonight on the 1911 Syndicate, we are going to take the show in a little bit of a different direction. You see, I grew up watching way too many action movies, and one of the things they put in my head is that it is very easy to shoot a target from a moving vehicle. And tonight, we are going to test that out. The goal is to set a world record for the fastest shot landed on a steel target from a moving vehicle. Not, I'm not talking about a steel target that's like the size of a refrigerator, I'm talking about like a standard C-zone steel. The goal is 100 miles per hour. Now, in order to execute a plan as ludicrous as this, um, you need a roadmap, right? You need a blueprint, if you will. And that, my friends, is what we are going to put together right here in the most scientific of ways. So we will have at our starting line, the vehicle will be driving in a straight-ish line. Now we're going to need to shoot into some sort of a backstop. Obviously, you just can't send rounds flying out into the world. So we'll call this M for mountains. My theory is that you're going to want to target at roughly the vehicle's like one o'clock position. That way I don't want to be shooting to a 90 degree out. I want to be shooting roughly at a clean straight on angle. 150, maybe 200 yards out, you start torching off the round. So we're going to have the vehicle. I will be in the vehicle, not driving. We will have a driver. So we will have this represent me. I will have a gun. Jake, with his gun, will start shooting bullets towards the target. Now we're going to need a way to confirm the hits. And then I think we will probably have a few people come out to observe. So we will put them in an observer's box over here with a spotting scope. We'll just call them fans. I've thought long and hard about this. This is the best plan that we can come up with. We have fans, we have targets, target cameras, Jake with gun in vehicle moving at least 100 miles per hour. At that point, this is the roadmap. This is it. This is brilliance. Now we cue the music. Let's make this shit happen.
Now, pulling this off is not the easiest thing in the world, but fortunately, we have assembled a crack squad of human beings. But first, we've got a couple thank yous in order. Guys, thank you number one to Sagara Gear. Hey, Juan at Sagara, we're doing this all in the name of you. Wearing, wearing your belts out here today, I'll have your mag carrier on. Um, I love the mag carrier. This is almost just like me talking to Juan over at Sagara at this point. Um, I love the mag carriers, they're great. I didn't need a full battle belt for what we're doing today. You do make one, it's the battle wagon, but I'm not gonna rock that today because the light inner Velcro belt is uh, perfectly adequate for what we're doing out here. Um, guys, they make great gear. Um, many of you already know that. For those of you that don't, you should definitely go check it out. The code is 1911 syndicate, no spaces. That'll save you guys 10% off of that. The other thank you would be to a company that I think loves speed and power. Um, that would be Big Tech's Outdoors Power. They're big, big techs. Speed, because if you place your order before 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, it will ship the same day. Um, pretty much all the gear that will be on my little pew pew thing out here today, uh, they sell. So you can check that out. The code there to save you 10% off is 1911 SYN. That's S Y N, not S I N. Um, check that out. Great company, great gear. Thank you to both those guys. Let's get the party started. So the first thing we had to figure out is where to conduct um, an experiment such as this. Um, we needed a flat surface as smooth as possible, um, essentially a runway of sorts. Obviously you can't do something like this from a road for obvious reasons. Um, so we have narrowed down a location. Uh, this is a field of sorts. Um, yeah, it's a nice flat white field that we have found here. Next is what is the record that we are actually attempting to break. So as it turns out, we were gonna be doing this with the uh, Guinness Book of World Records. As it turns out, there is no record. Uh, so we could do this from three miles per, per hour. World freaking record, everybody. Big deal, right? Uh, we're gonna try to speed it up just a tad, see if we can add a little bit of stank to this whole thing. But um, because there is no world record, because there is not much of a market for Guinness to continue breaking this record, and because of some of the other various things that will happen, uh, they have no interest in participating in this. So we are coming up with our own judging criteria. The first thing that we will do is we will have a target camera that'll be positioned about 50 feet off of the primary target that is being shot. So that target should uh, be able to pick up the hit. The second thing is we will have an independent judge with a spotting scope um, to also indicate if there has been a hit. Okay, so we are here with our um, independent judge, uh, Riley, just so that everyone at home can understand the message. Are you indeed independent? Yes. Excellent. The next thing we had to do was come up with some safety considerations. Obviously doing something like this from a moving vehicle with live rounds um, with a goal of 100 miles per hour. Hey, there's some things you gotta think about. First, related to the location. Um, so we will be shooting things that in this field uh, that we're in, things are, are, it's really tough to tell distance perspective. So we will be shooting into a backstop um, that will be a little tough to really tell on this. Also factoring in that as we're shooting um, from a moving vehicle, the angle will of course be going down. Um, so rounds will be impacting the field pretty quickly. Um, we also have a lot of medical gear here, um, folks here with medical training. So this is just to give you a sense at home. We didn't just show up and decide to do this today. We have thoroughly planned this operation out. Okay, the next thing we had to figure out is the vehicle. Uh, obviously, you gotta be moving at a fairly uh, high rate uh, on this field, um, so we bought a large man, um, and you dressed really appropriately for 105 degrees, so congrats on that. Yeah, yeah. You've chosen wisely today. <laughs> uh, so Felix is a friend of mine. Uh, he owns a shop called Utah Overland in downtown Salt Lake, correct? Yeah, yeah, just your local Salt 
you know, Salt Lake based off road shop. Yeah. yeah off-road shop and um you know throw a little bit of power in there speed and power really yeah all the fun stuff and some overland stuff um so i guess a couple of things on on vehicle we'll um well i i guess even before we show off the vehicle uh you will also be driving today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are you and excited do you have a driver's license i do valid okay so that means he is qualified to be a professional race car driver today <laughs> um now Up until tomorrow at least Let's show you some of the mods made to the vehicle. Okay, so tell me about this uh, sweet, sweet Bronco we've got here. Yeah, so this is a Bronco with a Sasquatch package, and what we did was threw a camber kit on it. Um, so it has all the camber like control arms and all that goodness. It also has some really fancy Fox 3.0 shocks on it. Oh, so not even the 2.0. I mean, no, 3.0. Straight to yeah. the 3.0. Fully adjustable, like on the fly, just awesome. We also threw these 37, 1350s on it. You know, custom or not custom, but Icon wheels. Um, and then we had to get the power, you know, going too for your, your stunts. So I need power, man. We had to go ahead and tune this beast and get it up over 150 horse over stock and uh, throw a Borla exhaust on it for you too. A, a Borlax? Borlax yeah. okay. exhaust, yeah. Okay, yeah, sick. Yeah. Um, and then basically what we, you know, there's some considerations you got to make. So plenty of people, well, not many people knew we were doing this for, because, you know, people like to take ideas. So, um, so you know, a couple of people were told, they were like, you know, you shoot from the window or whatever. You go, look, the, 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 the thing is you can't, if the vehicle's going this direction, I can't shoot this direction. The crosswind, we'll talk about the science here in a little bit, it's too much, right? So we're shooting at like a one o'clock sort of angle. So basically we've ripped out and by ripped, I mean like with tools, like we purposely took out the front seat here. And when I say we, I mean, I did nothing, um, <laughs> but we as a collective team, I like to think of us as a team environment here. Um, we, we took the front seat out. So basically the plan will be, this is where I'm at. I'm laying it down. 100 miles an hour, sending it. This is not the stuff you tell your mom you're doing before you do it. Mm -hmm. This is once it gets done, the video's out, you're like, mom, you're gonna be disapproving of what happened here. But the Bronco, we did bring it out. And I mean, we brought it out like a week ago uh, to the field here. And uh, you know, we got her up to 100, so we know she can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, she'll be fine. No, felt we... stable, suspension felt good. The limiter fell off, so we can go as fast as you want. So. Excellent. <laughs> Two twenty-five. Okay. Shall be the speed. Well, we might need a V sixteen for that. But. Okay. Well, I can make <laughs> some calls. So that's the vehicle. Now let's talk about the gun. Okay. The next thing we had to figure out is the gun. So here's the deal, guys. Velocity is my friend today, and that presents me with a problem on a personal basis because most of my guns are short. Um, they're either short barrel 5.56 guns where velocity is reducing or they're 300 blackout. Um, they are 7.62 by 39 AKs. So none of this is particularly high velocity. So really when I looked at my uh, personal inventory and thought, well, what is the best thing that I have for this? Much to even my own surprise, it was the Sig Sauer AG 551. Now we have done a couple of videos, videos on this. This is a Swiss Sig. Um, there's only about 350 of these in the country, 16 inch barrel. It is basically like a hybrid of a AR and an AK, but it's Swiss, so it always works and it's awesome and beefy and all of that. It's made largely for like Arctic conditions. That's why when you're wearing Arctic gloves, and they don't fit in the trigger guard, you just get the trigger guard out of the way. You might be able to tell it is not Arctic conditions out here today. Um, we will talk about some of the scientific considerations in just a moment. For the optic, an EOTech was very much what I wanted. Some people suggested um, an LPVO so that you could zoom in and zoom out. And I just thought, look, eye relief, while you're bouncing along at 100 miles an hour standing from a moving vehicle, eye relief is the last thing that I'm looking to deal with, especially at those speeds. Obviously, the target will pass me very quickly. So I was looking for something with a very distinct reticle that's large enough that I could get that reticle near the target and start torching off rounds. The correct answer for what we're doing out here today is an EOTech. That's all fine and well. We've got the vehicle, we've got the gun, we got all that fun jazz, but what are the actual scientific considerations that come into play here? So 
So the last thing we had to take into consideration is the science. We were gonna have a scientific advisor, actual scientific advisor out here. Uh, I believe they called it a ballistician. He had a thing, come by, you had to go meet a guy about the thing and, and he couldn't come out here. So here we are. He did write me a detailed explanation of the things that I need to take into consideration today. So to calculate the lead distance with the bullet fired at a 20 degree angle, to the right of the vehicle. Moving at 100 miles per hour, we need to take into account the horizontal component of the bullet's velocity. Step one, calculate the horizontal component of the bullet's velocity. And then there's an equation. And this is just a screenshot. Like I don't actually have the equation. I just have a screenshot of the equation. Parentheses V underscore with another parentheses B underscore X. Close the parentheses equals V underscore B slash cause slash theta equals 3000 slash c dot slash cause 20 with the upwards asterisk parentheses circle with a backslash calculate the distance as the vehicle travels during this time hey dude c -dot you doing zero. right yeah i'm looking at the c dot i got your water here you go excellent thank even you. opened it for you if you want to take a swig so you trying to do the math yeah you know what so, 0.9397 is so it's that's 1.8 for pi so you're just accounting for that okay the b underscore b is going to be your barometric pressure copy so that's why when you multiply it times velocity you're going to get your drop okay okay yeah it's 101 degrees my scientific advisor did say that that was important to to note because he said some science people are going to watch this most notably sun rises at 6 15 a.m okay because per degree, that's how the bullet's going to drop. Right, and then the sun sets at 9.06 p.m. Correct. We're also at sea level, so you got to factor in the altitude down at sea level in Mexico, just outside of Mexico City, so... Fucking... Non-debatable. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> first run, holy first, shit. First try, bro. That's a fucking one and done there, boys. That's a clean center mass hit. Center mass? Center mass, fucking one, one clean round. Serious? From the fucking SIG 551. <laughs> that is so badass. I mean, I don't want to credit the driver too much, but you know. Dude. I can't fucking believe that, actually, Dude. on the first take. Guys, that's it for the world's fastest shot. Sometimes a plan comes together. That plan was this. Today, everything went according to plan. The gun, the vehicle, the driver, the shooter, the fan box, it all worked. All that to say, if you have a positive mindset and a good plan, you can do anything you put your mind to. That's world's fastest shot. We'll see you guys next time.